John. What? Red 7. I don't know what Red 7 means. Hot route. I don't. W- what is hot route? Will you just go stand on the other side, please? Down. Come on. Ready. Down. Set. Hut. 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 Hit me. Booyah. <laughs> That's what we call a sack lunch. Nom, 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 nom. It's time for the Soonerscoop.com postgame show presented by Eskridge Lexus in Oklahoma City. Eskridge Lexus is the official travel partner of Soonerscoop.com podcasts. Now, here's your road crew, Kerry, Eddie, and Bob, wrapping up all the action and reaction from this week's game. It is the Eskridge Lexus post game podcast uh, brought to you by Eskridge Lexus, the fine folks there. And I know uh, the vehicles are in short supply, but uh, you know what? If you got an Eskridge, go get your tires changed or something. Go take it in for some service. Uh, support the good folks who su- support us uh, or buy uh, one of the several cars that they have on the lot because uh, they gave me a loaner last week and there's not a lot of cars out there. Um, that's just the way the world is. There's not a lot of anything. There's not a lot of defense out there, Eddie, because all the players are hurt. Boy. Boy. It is, uh, well, I mean, yeah, let's start with the negative because we'll get into plenty of the positives, and there were a lot of positives on Saturday night in Norman, but, I mean, I just don't get it. I don't get it. Oh, I they, get it. I get it. They, they're not then, good. Then help me, help me understand. <laughs> because I like there there are like bright spots. There's there's great moments where you get off the field, you get a third down stop. Brian Osamo is flying around and then, you know, they go back out the next series and it's just big play after big play. Like I didn't think that they were just necessarily awful tonight, but there's nine to ten plays that. Yeah, you Billy look up Bowman's and you go, trying to defend Quentin Johnston. I mean, that's that's yeah. problem number one. Yeah. Uh, even when Joshua Eaton made a perfect play on high point of the football in the end zone and intercepted it, it didn't matter because Quentin Johnson was standing right there like, that's mine. And he just took it away from him. Seven receptions, 185 yards, three touchdowns. Look, I here's the thing, and this is what I've come to terms. Uh, it is currently 2.12 a.m. Uh, Eddie has edited tons of video. Bob Prisbillo has written all of his stories. I've done a post-game radio show. It's time now for the, the post-game podcast. I've had some time to think about some bleep. <laughs> and to talk about some bleep. Uh, this team is so banged up in the secondary. I mean, there's a couple of things like that could have gone really wrong tonight that didn't, too. Which is, Key Lawrence actually was invisible, which is a very good thing. Uh, and Justin Broyles played really well tonight. Like those are two things that you don't expect to happen. If you know that those two no. guys are starting, you're like well, there's going to be some problems during the game with those two guys, and there really weren't. The problem is with the guy that they moved to corner, who was undersized, and Billy Bowman, uh, and then the fact that Jaden Davis is starting on the other side because DJ Graham got a concussion and had to leave the game in the first half. Like, yeah. Wait, so when did that happen? Like I, that that completely just. Blew right by my face. I I had no Let's idea. See that if that I can see where my time stamp is. I can tell you. It was it was really early, and he had like a he had the big hit on the first series of the defense, and maybe that's when it happened. It I, was I really don't know. Less than an hour into the game when that happened okay. in real time that that happened. Right. So well, he was out. I guess most of the second quarter, and then he never came back. Uh, and, and here's the thing. We talked about this before, too. Like, Woody Washington, who could have foreseen that he would be one of the biggest losses on this team? And he absolutely is. But here's the thing, the big thing, the thing that you need to take into account. They play Kansas. They play Texas Tech. They have a bye week. And then it's murderer's row. Baylor, Iowa State, and Oklahoma State. Like, they have time to get healthy. 27 days, Kerry. They got 27 days to figure it out defensively. Because once they come back from that bye week, you're hitting all hands Baylor, on deck. Yeah, which which is is looking more and more like that's going to be a top fifteen matchup. You got Iowa State, who, by the way, they guess what time of year it is. They're starting to play pretty well. And in it's fact, I think Brock-tober. going into next week, if they're able to beat Oklahoma State and Ames next weekend, you can officially say that they're back in the title race or the you know championship game race right. to get to Arlington. 
And then, obviously, uh, Oklahoma State, who played extremely well from behind today and uh, steals one down in Austin. I, I'll tell you this, Kerry. I'm glad that we're doing an Oklahoma podcast and not having to talk about the shit show that is the Texas Longhorns right now. Two straight weeks, I've been sent videos of grown men crying. I mean, like I'm, openly I, sobbing. I would, it, I would be completely lying to you if I told you that, like, all the crowd shots of Texas fans in uh, DKR from this afternoon, uh, I'd be lying if I if I said that I didn't find some, like, sad, sick joy out of that. I I mean, I said it uh, today. It's it's like every time at the end of a uh, a Texas Longhorns game. I just feel like, you know, this should be playing in the background. It's a tradition like any other. The Surrender Cobra. At DK Royal Family Stadium, or whatever that place is called. I know that's sacrilege to you, Eddie. I'm sorry. But, uh, no. I mean, it's crazy. Their, yeah, it really is. Their fan base has got to be They've the most a lot. tortured fan base in all of college football. Well, and, you and know I know nobody's is, nobody's listening to this pod crying for them. Um. No, no, not at all. <laughs> like, and, and that's the thing, though. It's like maybe that maybe that program is what we think it is. Like, I know it's not like everybody. There's always this allure about Texas football, and it's just a mediocre bunch right now. But that, that's where they are. That's they're just a very average football program. Oklahoma State's a better football program. But I, but I here's the today. thing, though. They're an average, but. How many times do you have a a team that is capable of going out and starting a game like they have the last two weeks sure. and then just watching it fall? They had one offensive yard in the second half, right? Or the fourth now, quarter. Or fourth quarter, yes. Yeah. That's pathetic. It's pathetic. Holy shit, one offensive yard. It's pathetic. And, you know, B. John Robinson, again, disappears and gets outrushed by a, you know, a guy that uh, probably a lot of Texas fans either forgot about or didn't even know about, and Jalen Warren. Sure. Dominated yeah, yeah. the he had, game down the stretch. Is it right? Did Jalen Warren have 118 yards in the fourth quarter today? Yes. I mean, it, just, it was insane. I know you God. were on your way to the game. Uh, I was still sitting at home watching it, but yeah, he dominated that fourth quarter. Yeah, I was able to watch a little bit of the fourth quarter just kind of sitting around. I had to do radio from like 12 to 2 today, so I, I was able to kind of just chill and watch it. I was violently hung over this morning, Carrie. <laughs> Where'd you it, go last night? It's been night? so long. I hosted a charity event at oh, Oklahoma City Golf right. Country Club. Yeah. And it's it's it literally has probably been five to seven years since I woke up and threw up, and that happened this morning. And then I threw up again when I got to Norman. Well, at least you weren't in my car. That's all I Yeah, that yeah. is true. That is true. But I guess we're we're kind of bearing the lead. Uh Caleb Williams. Unbelievable. It's it's absolutely um. I I told it's you a different we team. This. We're watching a different team. It is like at one point two weeks ago, the season it's like the season split. Reality split. It's like my living in hell theory. Like somehow, uh, I you know we were transplanted to where the season ended and it started again. We just forgot that there was a preseason or something because this is a completely different offense under it's Caleb incredible. Williams. It's it, like, first off, the atmosphere in that stadium. I know when you they were flashed me. at Caleb Williams. I got good video of it. I'll put it up on the board. I'll send it over to you as well. It was like, there's only a handful of guys that have gotten individual, uh, like rounds of applause like that. Like Baker gets it when right. they show the NFL starters or the you know the the NFL players from Oklahoma. Kyler will get a good ovation. I remember got, CD Lamb was getting that by the time he was done here. Yeah, yeah. It was during just like a, the, yeah, the, the, the the starting the lineup of the starting lineups right. and yeah. stuff. Yeah, it was just it was incredible. It, it was almost like almost gave me chills. It's like holy shit. There's like he's done more in two quarters than a lot of people have in their entire careers at Oklahoma, it seems like. Well, here's a really good stat. I saw this in Mike Houck's uh, post-game notes. Um, and this this puts it per, into perspective of what we're seeing. There have only been five true freshmen that have started at quarterback in OU history. 
Uh, Daryl Royal, who uh, Texas Stadium is named after, that came all the way back in 1946. Uh, Troy Aikman, it was just one game in 1984. By the way, Daryl Royal, just one game. Jamel Holloway, eight games in 1985 before he blew out his knee. Uh, well, no, that was after, no, no, that's wrong. That was after Troy Aikman broke his ankle. Cale Gundy, five games in 1990. And Caleb Williams tonight. How about that list of quarterbacks? I mean, that's that's a who's who list of names there. And you think about it, like, the, what we're seeing from Caleb Williams, like, everyone remembers this. Baker Mayfield had a really nice freshman year at Texas Tech. But it wasn't, like, this good. And Kyler Murray at Texas A&M, I think he had one start when he was a maybe, – maybe he had three. I can't remember. Yeah, I think he had a handful of starts down at A&M. But, I mean, he he never was the type of quarterback that like, oh, yeah, he's the guy. He's got to stay in. He's never getting out. He's never being taken out. Like, what we're seeing from Caleb Williams is Baker-esque. It's Kyler Murray-esque. It's, I mean, it's incredible. to think that, that Spencer Rattler spent a year and a half and never was this good. Yeah. It says a lot about what we're witnessing right now. Well, I mean, he just does things that, like, the 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 41-yard touchdown run that he had tonight. It's just like, he can do things, and he makes it just look so easy. And then his ability to move around in the pocket, and I think that Josh noted it. Um, I saw he noted it during the game during uh, on Twitter, just as far as he does things that, like, you can obviously teach, but it seems like everything is just so, it's like second nature to him. It, it doesn't seem like he's... He's putting in a lot of effort to do something that obviously is taking a lot of effort, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. And he was so good tonight. I know this might be sacrilege. He was so good tonight. Uh, they were ov- able to overcome a Gabe Burkich missed field goal, which. I know. What, even the, the, what the hell, even man? Even the Texas game, they didn't do that. And none of the games before. Remember when all the people were so mad at Spencer Rattler and they were blaming him because Gabe Burkich was having to win games for us? Sure. Well, us. It's, bad. it's just it's late. It's, it's night and day. It's night and day difference. It's a night and day difference in the offense right now, and it's incredible. Like, where where the hell did Jaden Hazelwood come from? <laughs> well, I mean, that's the thing about Caleb Williams. That's the thing that's most impressive. Is that remember all the times that we were talking about? Remember coming out of that? Oh, what game was it? I think it was the West Virginia game. Where we were literally wondering what the hell the receivers were doing. Like, sure. It seemed like they just ran out to a defensive back and stood there. Yeah. And did and there was no one to throw to. And remember, everybody made such a big deal out of that one play where <laughs> Drake Stoops <laughs> broke wide open and he didn't hit him. Right. Like, no one's bitching about that kind of stuff now because he's hitting everybody. Yeah. He's and, even throwing and, he's even throwing Perfectly good touchdown passes to people like Austin Stogner that just missed them. Yeah, just just a straight up drop. But I got a great angle, uh, or I got a great shot of that that throw to Stogner in the end zone too. And it's like he fit that in a very very small window to Austin Stogner. Yeah, I think uh, I think Hazelwood said something after the game about it. It's just like, well, the back shoulder this, touchdown he no, throw to he has Hazelwood. No fear. I mean, that's what we're seeing too. Is like. We've seen Rattler trying to work those back shoulders to to Hazelwood, and it never mm-hmm. they never really connected on him. But Caleb Williams is connecting on those to to Jaden Hazelwood. Yeah, and and it's well, like and you heard not- you heard Mike Woods talk about in the post game uh, the fifty fifty balls and how much they you know love that he'll you know trust them to go up and come down with it. And we talked about that last week. Like that was just something that Spencer Rattler wasn't willing to do. It was like. He didn't want, it was almost like he was worried about his completion percentage. He only wanted to make throws that people could absolutely catch. He was like, he was, he was, what do they call it, paralysis by over analysis. It's just like, man, Caleb Williams is a young guy. He doesn't care. He's going to throw it up there and, and, and give you an opportunity to come down with it. And it's almost like the receivers, and Kennedy Brooks after the game, he's talking, and it's just like, I was really worried when we did the Isaiah Thomas show last week of, of making a promo out of him talking about the 66-yard touchdown run because mm-hmm. you saw him light up, and he was just like, wow. That, it, it, I mentioned you know, how much 
you know, momentum you could tell that they got from Caleb. And I was like, eh, I don't want to like, if I put that out there as a promo, every fan's going to be like, see, even, even the players know it needs to be Caleb Rattler. You suck. Sure. Like, I didn't want to start that. But like every player that's asked about it, they kind of say the same thing. It's like, no, it, it's almost, it, it's, it's a, it's a Caleb Williams love fest. It, it, it's one of those things too, that I think that sometimes we look at it and we say, well, that couldn't be true. But in, in reality, it is true. Like I, every person, every player on that team knows what Caleb Williams is bringing to that offense right now. And not just the offense, what he's bringing to the entire team as far as, uh, you know, just kind of being a spark plug. And you look at every one of those players. He's rubbing off about on Jane people. Hazelwood, yeah. Kenny D. Brooks, Eric Gray. Any of the skill position guys, carry, they have all elevated their play in the six quarters that Caleb Williams, or six and a half, seven quarters that Caleb Williams has played. Yeah, I mean, his energy just rubs off on everybody else. And and I hate... He's just one of those guys that can do it, too, without really being that Baker Mayfield in-your-face rah-rah guy. And I Caleb does say stuff. Like, you can see, like, I got a, a, a good picture before the game. Caleb Williams is, like, in the middle of the... Uh, offensive line offensive huddle. Offensive line. Yeah. Uh, like, team huddle or group huddle. And it's just like it's little things like that. It's can I, it's me, waiting. Can I it's waiting for the team to go back into the locker room, and, and Caleb Williams is the one guy that's standing there, like you know, shaking everybody's hands, giving everybody high fives and stuff. It just it it's little little things like that. And there was somebody that like turned around to me. And he's like, "That's it. Like that's the difference right there." And he didn't even have to say what he was talking about. We both knew. Does it seem to you, because you're looking on the sideline all the time and you're getting B-roll and stuff of, like, Lincoln, does it seem like to you that Lincoln and Caleb's interactions are just a little different than Lincoln and Spencer's? 100%. Like, it, if I could explain it, I would almost say, like... We can... I'll, I'll put together a, a little mashup. I mean, it is... <sighs> I, I don't know how to how it to explain it. It seems to be exactly. more of a of a conversation, more of a a dialogue, more of a yes, one hundred percent. Like there's more back and forth. There's more. I don't want to say teaching because I don't know what's going on, but it it seems like Caleb is more receptive to Lincoln and what he's telling him, and Lincoln is also more receptive to what Caleb is saying back to him. It it's it one thousand percent. 1000% agree. Even even this uh this evening there was like there were points in especially in the first half in the first quarter like Lincoln and I've never seen him carry like a clipboard with him. Yeah, I saw has, that. Like, the and they small... were going over with they were going over it with each other. I don't know if that was like their script that they cuz it was early in the game when I right. saw it. It was like it was like the first I noticed it on the first series after the touchdown and like Lincoln's like drawing plays up and stuff. Or no, no, I don't know about plays, but no, it was they showed a close up on TV. It was like a spreadsheet. Okay, so it was like you, I think it was their script, like what how okay. they scripted the the plays to start the game because it was like Lincoln was like going over a row and like they were going down the rows and showing like we did this and this and then we got this coming and this. So I think that's what it was. There is uh, definitely it's a it's a it's a different level of understanding and in conversation. There's no doubt about and it. Communication. I mean, yeah. I'm glad you brought that up because I was I was going to say something on the U40 about that. It's it is, and I'll I'll put up the video on the on the board and uh, you know the post game podcast thread or something because it just. It's it it's it it's hard to explain. It's it's it. There is something there though, and. Like, I don't want to be negative because I do think that, like... It's hard to was, praise Caleb Williams without saying something like negative really about shitting Spencer on. Rattler. I yeah. know, I know, I know. And it, it, it's it's just so weird, too, though, because... And there's just no other way to say this than... I got some pretty good video of, like, pregame stuff, like, right before kickoff. And, and, and I will credit Spencer Rattler because that had to have been a very awkward evening for him. Yeah. And it seemed like he handled everything fairly well. Like to sit there and and watch the guy that is 
basically taking your job, not only excel, but do it at, you know, somewhat of a historical rate. And I did notice it tough. seemed like he was more on Lincoln's hip tonight than he was and last I, week. And I will say, like, it looked like from, from what I saw, Rattler was very in tune with the game. It looked like he had made a conscious effort to say, people are looking at me out the, on the sidelines. There's going to be TV cameras on me on the sidelines. I don't need to sit over here and pout and look like a little bitch. It, that, that that's kind of that that's the only way to say it, but it's funny. And I was talking to Nate Fagan about this. The lack of interaction that those two have, like Caleb Williams and Spencer Rattler, is just it's so awkward. It's so like it makes me feel uncomfortable watching those two like basically kind of go out of their way to avoid each other at all costs. It's and like, I got video before the game. It's like and it, it is, Carrie. It is a top ten most uncomfortable watch. Like just how they kind of go about, like just basically walking by each other and literally looking the other way. It's got to be like two exes at a wedding. No, yes, it is. <laughs> they they share like they share the goddamn quarterback room together. Yeah. Like they, and and then that kind of gets me into like the stuff that like maybe Riley, two, two exes that one's a groomsman and the other's a bridesmaid. Sure. And they have to do like, you know, the rehearsal dinner together and stuff and oh, it's it's got to be just, awful for him. What what do you think? What do you make of like the I don't know, like the Riley like going out of his way like to not there's there's a, I, I talked about this after the overly game praise him I, it just is weird it, it's, it's it's very weird to me to me it it's bad analogy time I'm sorry it's like uh if you raised a kid that just was really wild and maybe he like ran away from home mm -hmm. uh and then you started a new family and you had another kid <laughs> and you wanted to make sure that, you know, you didn't coddle him and uh, spoil him and that he grew up right and he wasn't going to get addicted to smack and run away from home. Like, you you never want to praise him too much. You never want to build him up. It's like, okay, let's not let this kid's get head get too big to the point that he thinks that he's all that. Like... Let's keep it him almost, in, let's keep him in check. Let's 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 make him work to be great instead of every time he throws a completion, you're just like, man, you're you're really doing great out there. It's it's almost in a way too like Riley knows that Caleb can handle it. Like he is just such a more mature person maybe than Rattler so. is. Yeah, maybe so. Maybe he's mentally that stronger. It's, it's almost it's almost like they've had conversations behind closed doors between Lincoln and uh, Caleb, and it's like you know I got you. Like, I'm going to have to go out there and I'm going to say some stuff because we know we have to bring Spencer along a little bit. Well, you know, and you know this story. kind of goes back to those conversations on the sidelines, though. It's like, there was one, there was a, I don't know if you saw the clip, it was in the Sights and Sounds, I think, last week uh, from the Cotton Bowl. And they're talking and, like, Caleb kind of hits Lincoln in the chest a little bit. Mm -hmm. And it was just like a, it was kind of like a, yeah, I got you, coach. I got you. And it's like they they're thinking on the same wavelength almost. You know, I I think what's probably going to happen is is his his star continues to to get brighter. I think this story that, you know, the first time I talked to his dad to Caleb's dad, it was that you remember I wrote a story about it when him saying we told Lincoln if we feel like this is the place for Caleb we're coming here whether you offer us a scholarship or not. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of made its way out there a little bit, but I think that will blow up nationally. But that kind of shows you, like, Caleb really does share his father's view of that. Like, and that's a very Baker thing. Just like him coming here, even though Trevor Knight was coming off of the Sugar Bowl and he was a Heisman, you know, front runner going into that season. And he was like, I don't care. I want to play at Oklahoma because that's where I want to be. I want to play for Lincoln Riley. Like, Caleb's kind of got that same attitude. Yeah. No, I think he does. And it's exciting in a way, knowing that he's going to be around for, you know, two and a half more years under Lincoln Riley. Uh, but at the same time, it's just like, 
I don't think that there's anybody, even the people that were calling for Caleb to take over, you know, at the in the West Virginia game. Oh, they had game. no I idea. No, it's, I mean, it's, I, that's the thing. It's like, you know, people are like wanting to take credit. Like, yeah, you guys just, you guys thought we were stupid. It's like, well, you're, you weren't stupid. You were just doing what all fans do. Is like you had no idea that Caleb just, Williams would come out and do this. You just wanted to change for the sake of change, which I sure. get it. That happens all the time. If you see sure. something that's not working, you just assume that the that there's somebody better because this is Oklahoma. You just got lucky that there was someone that was this good because no one knew that he'd be this good. No, this fast. And it, I mean, you were asking for a guy to come in into the game that hadn't played meaningful snaps in a year. Two, two years. years, yeah, two years, and for him to play like he has over the you know the first seven quarters, uh, it's just, I it, it feels it's, like it's something more than it's a lightning guy just in a going bottle. I mean, good. it's it's once again it's lightning in a bottle. It is like if you don't if you don't now believe that Baker Mayfield and Kyler Murray being back to back number one picks and Heisman Trophy winners wasn't winning the lottery after seeing. Jalen Hurts wasn't quite that. Uh, Spencer Rattler wasn't anywhere close to that. Like you had two quarterbacks to show you that it's just it just doesn't happen because you want it to happen sure. or because Lincoln Riley is their coach. And I mean the other funny thing is Caleb Williams was not Lincoln Riley's first choice to be his quarterback in that class. Yeah, yeah. And. I don't know what's going to happen to Brock Vandergriff in his career, but I would have a hard time believing he's going to be this good. I would agree. So it's like even Lincoln Riley chose someone else over Caleb Williams before all this happened. So it's, it's lightning just, in a bottle. I mean, it's 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 winning the, the lottery. Is, it, the whole thing has been insane. The whole thing has been insane over the last couple of weeks. I mean, I don't think that anybody could have could have forecasted him to come in and he hasn't just been good. He's been phenomenal. Excellent. Phenomenal. Like Kirk Herbstreit's trying to throw him into the Heisman Trophy. That was race. a funny. That was a really funny part of the broadcast because Fowler was like, "You can't do that." He's like, and then like he throws that pass that like almost a perfect pass for a touchdown. Uh, and it was just like, well, maybe you can do that. Like, it's just yeah. like with the with the people out there that are just blowing your mind in college football, the list is few and far between. And he is making his teammates better. There's just no other he's way to say the entire it. team better. I mean, well, at least last week he made the defense better. This week you can't say the same thing. Sure, they took a step back. It, but at the same time, I think that there is a, you know, somewhat of a energy boost that he has brought into just his presence on the field. And Kennedy Brooks has run the ball about as well as he, I can remember him ever running the last two weeks. Yeah. Although yeah, I mean, he, it was kind of messed up too, that they took him out on the last uh, possession. To he does all that Gray work get to get him down to the two yard line. And then they put gray in. <laughs> I will say though, he was getting the shit beat out of him. I oh mean, my God. they were hammering Dude. him. I was like, you should take him out of the game. Like, you know, he's your best running back. And the game's pretty much salted away. Like don't use him to salt it away. Use somebody. I mean, put the uh, weatherman Jay in there or something like, yeah. Marcus major was in for a couple snaps tonight. I didn't even notice uh, that by yeah, the way, he was in for, for one, I think it, it, I know that he was in for one. By the way, uh, two thirty-eight a.m. here as we're we're podcasting. Uh, I think that we we got we got the early answer today, uh, Eddie. Knowing that uh, Josh would not be joining us tonight, when he let us know he was drunk at about one a.m. or one p.m. Yeah, this I afternoon. think he's, I think he's been uh, probably asleep for a couple <laughs> days or for a couple hours. I mean, maybe more than that. Yeah, but yeah, uh, you know, he was he was like has has David Aguayu even played? I've only seen him on one play, like. He was second on the team in, in tackles tonight. So David Aguebu actually played quite well tonight. Yeah, there's a, like, it just didn't, defensively it didn't that's really the thing that, register, that's I the, guess, yeah. That's the thing that I don't understand about the defense. It's like you can look and you can pick out good spots. And the Joshua Eaton play is like a perfect example of he was in great position. He just got the ball taken from him. He got mossed. Oh, sorry. 
Need no, little, you're good. It's just like coke, there's caffeine. I didn't think the defensive line played particularly well today. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. linebackers. I thought Brian Osamoa, he flashed at moments. I can't tell you that Deshaun White, did he do anything tonight? Um, well, he fumbled. Oh, a, played OK. Sean White fumbled the ball into the end zone. For oh, yeah, touchback. that's right. I forgot about that. Which was a fantastic play up until that point. Like he was, yeah, and and you know what? That was a great play by Latrell McCutcheon to uh, knock the ball. Yeah, loose. second time he's done that this year. Uh, but no, I mean, yeah, it was weird on the defensive line. You know, they played uh, Isaiah almost exclusively uh, on the interior, mm-hmm. and they played Caleb Kelly a lot on the outside. Um, which you know, I'm kind of back and forth on that. I don't know that that's the way to go. I mean. I think that there's there are much much bigger problems over on that side of the football right now. But I mean, than, we're just talking about you know the defensive line didn't show. And oh, the sure. other thing is you know Duggan is just once he senses pressure, he's gone. So yeah, he's just very difficult to corral. Um, yeah. and he's really you know one of the biggest parts of their offense. I mean, it just happened that the secondary was awful, and yeah. they made a they, lot of big they, plays. They, they got 27 days. It's kind of like we talked about at the beginning. They got 27 days to be able to get healthy and figure it out. Hopefully you get Woody Washington back. Dellen Turner, Yell should be back here in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. I think Jalen Redman will be back for Texas Tech. Uh, you know, you get those three guys back and you can probably uh, start moving in the right direction as far as kind of righting all the wrongs on that side of the football. And but, obviously with DJ Graham being a concussion, the worst that would be would he wouldn't play at Kansas next week. Yeah, and I mean, you shouldn't. You shouldn't have to need Even him up if in Lawrence. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, you know, the it's not I, the the thing that bothers me is it's not like they're just busting a bunch of stuff. It's just missed tackles. It's being out of position. That's the kind of shit that just shouldn't be happening right now. Well, and the other thing is, you know, m- moving Billy Bowman to corner. Doesn't it make more sense to just kind of force Latrell McCutcheon in, into playing more? Because I think he's more the answer than anybody else on that roster. For Same another Josh corner. Eaton. Yeah. I mean, I didn't think that Eaton was just terrible. No. I mean, that's, that's a situation very that he few, can certainly he, learn from. He, at least he was in position to make a play on the football. The last time I saw a young player make that good of a play on the ball in the end zone was Woody Washington. Sure. So that I mean, it was a fantastic play. It's just you know, Quentin uh, uh, Johnston is a massive human being, and he just ripped the ball right out from under him. I mean, that was a great play. I mean, that it was just a, a great play on his part. I don't know what that motion he was trying to make was at the end of trash talk or whatever. It was kind of uh, funny. I think he was like, I think he was basically like, the, I think that's like the the equivalent of rocking the cradle, isn't it? Or rocking the baby. I think uh, he's like yeah. saying that you're small, like you're a small Maybe person. Maybe so, yeah. He's like, L- stay down, little man. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I was disappointed, though, with, it just seems like they didn't get, they they just don't generate any pressure with the, with the uh, defensive line. Outside of Nick Benito. Benito's yeah. excellent. He gets held on every play. I think he tweeted something after the game and had to delete it, but... Well, he got tackled in the end zone. I mean, there should have been a safety at the end. There. Oh, what? I mean, the, the guy literally, he double-legged him. Yeah, it was from behind. pathetic. Lincoln but, about lost his mind. Like, I don't know. Like, Perry Winfrey's been pretty disappointing. But here's the thing. Here's the, here's the bonus for me with the defense tonight. If you told me before the game started that Key Lawrence and Justin Broyles were going to be starters, I would have been like, oh, shit. Like, how many plays are those guys going to give up? And they yeah. played. They both played really well. Yeah, I thought Broyles played okay. Pat Fields had a pretty rough night. Led the team in tackles, though. Pat Fields did? Yeah. I don't know if that's a good thing. Well, he leads the team in tackles overall. Oh, season. overall. Yeah. I didn't really think it was a rough night for Pat Fields, I'll be honest. He did not uh he did not get a very glowing score from Joshua. Hmm. Sixty three. Interesting. But I mean but, the, I mean, also you had some offensive line injuries that were a little concerning. Yeah. You had some combinations so, at times that were a little weird. Tyrese Robinson has an ankle issue. Eric Swenson comes in for him. What happened 
to Anton Harrison. I just noticed that he he came up like he was very late getting back to the line of scrimmage from it was one of the uh, long plays. It might have been the Mike Woods 59 yard reception. Yeah, it, I, mean, I, was, I, I never saw what happened. though. It was early in the second half um, because I was running an errand and I was listening. Plank was reporting it on the radio and I was just getting back right as the second half was getting underway. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't did I I don't even remember it tracking whether he came back in or not. He did. He did. One hundred percent. Yeah, it, it did seem like the guys that left the field banged up. Most of them came back, except for DJ. Yeah, Brown. even even Benito. I know Benito. That, got, you know, there were some people that yeah. were worried about him uh, limping off at one point, but he came back in on the very next series. Yeah. In fact, we got video of him uh, kind of running it around, so he he looked like he was okay. I mean, the biggest thing is you got Kansas and Texas Tech. And a bye week. Yeah, you you, gotta get, you Woody, got 27 days to get Woody healthy. healthy. I mean, once Redmond comes back, then they can put Isaiah back outside. Um, and then you got to get DeLarian Turner yell back. Sure. And you got to get DJ Graham back. Oh, the, the, there was uh, one other. Uh, I guess Plank said hamstring for Mario Williams. Yes. Yeah. Right. And he, uh, he was he was dancing around and having a pretty good time late in the fourth quarter on the sideline. So I don't yeah, think he, that is something. I think that, Plank said that he came out of the halftime locker room, started stretching and trying to run, uh, and he could tell something was wrong, and he took his gloves out of his belt and threw them into the stands like he was disgusted, knowing that he wasn't <laughs> going to be able to play. Did you see that damn picture that he put up on Instagram with uh, Lincoln his sunglasses on with Lincoln? In the locker room at Texas, yeah. Yeah, that was pretty good. And... and uh, Caleb Williams was right next to him. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, I noticed he switched to the orange mouthpiece tonight. Maybe that was what. Maybe it was bad juju. Yeah, he had like a. It was like one of those like old school looking. Uh, well, he mouthpieces. and Jaden both have the. They were wearing the green ones. I thought maybe it was like a Joker thing, but he was wearing orange tonight. Have you ever noticed that like caleb williams does not put his mouthpiece in he like ch- just chews yeah, he on puts it. it on the side of his he, he puts the side of it in his mouth for some reason it, like it doesn't bother me i just don't know why he has it in there hey he caught every snap too so I, that's another bonus yeah i mean he was good yeah, they, they were they were really good he was really good he's gonna put up big numbers over the next couple weeks and uh you know it, expectations are going to build and it basically becomes a three-game se- uh, season for Oklahoma, and it starts with uh, the the trip down to Waco. I did think like, it I, was it was it was interesting listening to Lincoln, and you know, I I think maybe he thought that there was more controversy than there really was this week. I mean, to me, the noise that I heard was he better start Caleb Williams. Like, yeah, I don't think, I mean, and, and I'm maybe he's thinking back to like the student reporter that asked him that question about his personality and stuff. Um, no, like I did think that that was kind of weird, but you know what it is. It's kind of like the shit that we talked about privately too. It's like all of these stupid ass Instagram, like college football dot whatever puts out these stupid ass reports and people believe it. Yeah, I mean, it's like there was one. It's like the uh, it's like the Rattler stuff. This this yeah, it's like we're week. here it's and like, Rattler's going to start, and then they and then they put a giant caveat right after they post that. But the situation is fluid, so don't be surprised if he doesn't start. Yeah, or the or the stuff that was even worse at the beginning of the week. It's like I've talked to sources in Norman and Spencer Rattler will enter the transfer portal in the next couple of days. It's like, yeah, that guy. What, what are, what's wrong with you people? I don't know if I hate that or I hate my friends that that believe it. Text me and ask me if that's true. Yeah, I think the best stuff is that that's out there. Is the uh, it was it was kind of funny too that like how many people from uh, south of the Red River all of a sudden had sources in Norman, Oklahoma this week. <laughs> it's like, well, what? they really have nothing Where, better to do. Where's the stuff even coming from? There's not a whole lot for them to do down there right now. Except no, bitch. and I, I, I mean, I they might be four and four by this time next Saturday. I don't necessarily think that they're going to go down to Waco and win. Yeah, it's a big, it's a big week in the Big Twelve next week. Obviously, OU is playing Kansas at eleven a.m. 
uh, on ESPN. But the two games that are, that are very, very intriguing that will have an impact on who ends up getting to Arlington, Iowa State hosting Oklahoma State up in Ames, which, you know, if Oklahoma State can get through that game, it makes for a very interesting bedlam and a very interesting back half of the schedule. I kind of am leaning towards thinking that Iowa State's going to win that game and all of a sudden be right back in it as well. And then Baylor and Texas. I mean, Baylor will have a a very good chance of finding a way to try to get to Arlington if they can uh, beat the Horns on Saturday. I mean, if I'm Texas, Spencer Rattler was not good, or Spencer Sanders was not good today. He was awful. Yeah. They, and they, they still won that game. Mike Gundy, and uh, he basically said, we're going to give this to game to uh, Jim Knowles, and you guys figure out a way. I mean, it's still, it, it, it's almost like this has been such a long day, but thinking back on it, flabbergasted that they won that game as bad as Spencer Sanders oh. played. Oh, and imagine, like, Texas is driving up 17-3, to and the Jason Carter pick six, and all of a sudden it's a, it's a ball game. If Texas is able to go score and it's 24-3, to I mean, I will, who knows what happens? But I, will I, say, I don't I, know if Oklahoma State's able to dig themselves out of that hole. I did enjoy all the jokes about uh, maybe you need breaks because you're running out of gas every saw, every second half. I saw my who's quickly becoming one of the, maybe my favorite families of Oklahoma football. Uh, I saw S- Steve Stutzman took a nice shot at Texas today. Oh, did he? He said something about uh, don't need gas if. If, or don't need to hit the brakes if you run out of gas or something like that. <laughs> but it was disappointing because uh, Big Fox or Big Noon Kickoff was not in Austin today. Why weren't they? I noticed that this morning. I mean, I guess they don't always go on location. That's only for special games. I kind of thought that they did. I don't know. Although I mean, Wendy's it was, isn't paying it, it, them enough. Bob was already back in Oklahoma today. Yeah. They showed him up yeah. on the big board tonight. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm guessing he probably had a couple extra tequilas for uh, the Hawkeyes. Oof. It's embarrassing. What if none of the Big Ten teams are any good? I mean, it's possible. I don't think... It, it is funny that, you know... You know what? The, uh, the, 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 the big talking point coming out of this weekend will be Ohio State is the best team in the Big Ten. Oh, well, JoJo was, you know, setting the stage for that last weekend. I love it. I love it. I saw that he had OU at five again this week. <laughs> behind Alabama, behind uh, Cincinnati. In Ohio State. Yeah, in Ohio State. He's on a roll right now. Oh, man. Yeah, never changed, JoJo. No. God, no. That'd be the worst. So, yeah, it's going to be, uh, I don't know, you know what this week is going to be. I just hope that things kind of die down. I'm sure... We'll still have to deal with a lot of, I hear Spencer Rattler's going to be in the portal today type stuff. But. I would hope not. I mean, I'm just trying to think of all those idiots out there that are just trying yeah. to start stuff for they attention. Only have, they only have five games left. I mean, he's not going anywhere. I'll find it really interesting if he enters the draft. Don't you kind of think like that's. I mean, there's only two plays. He's not coming back to Oklahoma. No. You either enter the draft or you somehow find your way back to uh, maybe Arizona, Arizona State, something like that. If he enters the draft, though, that signals what the problem is with the guy. He doesn't have enough good tape to even be drafted. Sure. And if he thinks that he does, that's the problem. No, it is. It he needs to is. go somewhere and become a and prove that he's a great quarterback because he hasn't done that yet. His, go down to uh, go down to Oxford. Hmm. Play for Lane Kiffin. Is is uh, I think Matt Corral is a senior. Is he a senior? I think so. Or at least he, he's at least draft eligible. Well, yeah, he'll be draft. I mean, that guy's got. Major heat on him. He's got to go after this year. Do you see all that shit that happened down there today? Knoxville? No, uh uh-uh. I mean, I saw the game was pretty close, and it was back and forth. They had a 20-minute... You you need to go uh, check it out. They had a 20-minute delay in the fourth quarter with with 40-something seconds left. 
because Tennessee fans were throwing stuff onto the uh, field. Wow. Somebody threw a golf ball at Lane Kiffin. Wow. And if you, if you go to Lane Kiffin's Twitter, he uh, tweeted out a gif from Seinfeld when George Costanza gets the uh, the golf ball out of the whale's uh, blowhole. Uh-huh. And he tweeted that that gif. It's pretty funny. He also, somebody threw a water bottle at his head and he caught it as he's walking off the field. Old Miss ends up winning the game. They hold on. Tennessee gets uh, the ball back with like, oh, there's like 45 seconds left. And they get it all the way down to the uh, Old Miss 20-yard line. This is after the uh, stoppage. But I guess the the Tennessee fans, like Greg Sankey's made a statement. Uh, the athletic director over at Tennessee's made a statement. It was if you just scroll through Twitter and put Tennessee Vol fans, they're getting dunked on because it was like it, it was just embarrassing. I gotta admit though, just the fact that they were in that game, bravo, Josh Heupel. You're doing way yeah. better than I thought you would. Thirty-one twenty-six, I think, was the final. And the, oh, and then the final play of the game, uh, the Tennessee quarterback just runs out of bounds. Doesn't even give him an opportunity. Oh wow. It was pretty bad. Uh, two things that that just came to mind, too, that I thought the stuff with Riley talking about Jaden Hazelwood after the game was kind of interesting about, uh, you know, basically talking to the team Standing last night and saying that, team, yeah. which is I, I kind of take as like a major sense of growth on Jaden Hazelwood's part. He doesn't necessarily seem like the guy that. Would and he do was that. he was, I mean, a lot better after the game in the interview setting than I've heard him. Yeah. Well, he was in a great mood. He had probably the best game of his career. It's incredible I think that Bob the asked him a Bob question that out. he kind of got confused about. Uh, yeah, I think he did too. <laughs> I think I think he he thought he was asking him, "Do you think you'll ever have a game this good again?" When he was saying, "Were you frustrated that you hadn't had this game, this type of game before?" And he was like, "Oh, I think I'll have a game like this again. I don't know." Yeah, like I'll, I'll pray for it. Like, it's like, no, oh, that's no not really. Okay. What, what was that? I literally would have okay. stopped. I wanted Bob to like stop and back. Like, no, no, that's not what I'm saying. He seems like a good kid. No, he always has. It's been. It, it's just crazy. Like, and again, I know that we've kind of hit on this already, but the wide receiver unit just looks completely different with Caleb Williams throwing him the football. I mean, all of a sudden, Marvin Mims is just wide open all the time. You have a roster now. Like before, you didn't even know if you you had a roster that was any good any good at receiver. Yeah. Now you Everybody feel like you have like... middling. Now you feel like you have an entire team full of badasses. It's just like, I can't imagine what that's like for A, for Spencer Rattler to sit there and watch... And then B for like the players to just acknowledge that this thing is moving at such a better pace than it was. Yeah, it's crazy to me. But that's I mean, all of are. a sudden, all of a sudden, Mike Woods is the guy that we thought that he was going to be when he came over from Arkansas. Yeah, he looks really good. Jaden Hazelwood looks, looks really good. He Marvin looks Mims great. looks really good. I mean, how they're good doing is all this? How good is with, Theo Weese when he gets back? Yeah, no kidding. And I, I will note that uh, Theo, he's off the scooter, right. which is good news. He just has the boot now. Uh, he certainly was kind of moving around like somebody that maybe could get onto the field here in the next couple weeks. I don't know how much, uh, you know, I don't know how quickly he'll be able to uh, acclimate himself. But, yeah, make an impact. Uh, you know, if, if you can get him back at some point, especially in the next 27 days before you start those final three games of the year, uh, this offense is all of a sudden looking like uh, something that I think a lot of people are familiar with when you're talking about Oklahoma offensively. Look, I, I to wrap this up, um, I know the defense isn't anything that makes anyone uh, have any happy feels. They're they're going to get better because they're going to get healthy. Um, you got Kansas, you got Texas Tech, you got a bye week. Uh, and then, then we see. I mean, at least now, Eddie, you know that this team is capable of of making a run because I don't think sure. until the last two weeks, until at least halftime of the Texas game beyond and, and beyond it's the first time all year you've thought, okay, this team is finally making that jump that we thought that they would make with Spencer Rattler. They just never did it with Spencer. They're doing it now with Caleb. You should feel a certain kind of something about this team that you haven't felt all year. And that's a good thing. I know it's well, not all I perfect. 
just just the fact that we can sit here and they won by 21 and we can be super critical about some things, I think is probably a step in the right direction. It definitely is. It definitely is. But, you know, it's going to be fun watching Caleb Williams grow and keep doing more. And I thought, you know, you noticed that the tempo was a lot better today. They went faster than they did a week ago. So you could tell mm-hmm. just a week of practice mm-hmm. gave Lincoln a, a better sense of comfort just up in the tempo in the game, and that was a nice step forward. And and I, I think we're going to continue to see more with the run game, see more with the trick plays like we did against Texas. I think I wa- I'm wondering if this is kind of reinvigorating Lincoln a little bit too, that he's not just banging his head against the wall trying to get the, this offense to work now. Now it's working. I would, it's got to be fun for him. I just would love to know, like, not necessarily if he's surprised by any of this, but if he could go do it all over again, if he would have made the move earlier. I, I know I don't think he would never, could have. He would I never mean, admit it. I don't think you could have because he had to give Spencer time. There were there are a lot of coaches that never would have made this move by now. Sure. God, can you imagine? I don't think they I mean they they're, obviously don't be They're Texas. named Kirk Ferentz. It's just incredible. It really is. By the way, did you see the uh, post game handshake between Mac Brown and the man he fired, Manny Diaz, today? No. Go find it. It is icy. It is oh, it's super icy, and it's super uh, okay, Grandpa. I'm leaving now. Like Manny Diaz wanted nothing to do with having a conversation with Mac Brown at midfield after losing to him. Damn, so Miami got beat again today. Yeah, and Mac had this bewildered look on his face like, son, you need to just let this go. (laughs) It was bizarre. Like, you were asking, like, Bob was asking me, he's like, hey, tell me if if it's awkward between Holly Rowe and and Lincoln in the post game." And it was Mm -hmm. was fine. It was a standard interview. And he was, I mean, Lincoln was really good. He, he he didn't hold any grudges or anything after she tweeted that stuff about Caleb. Sure. And he shouldn't because he should have let Caleb talk to her. But It's a different story for another day. Yeah. We were just thankful to get post-game access, right? I'm just glad they're practicing journalism in this world again, Eddie. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, I think we should end it on that one. Uh, we'll be back again. My God, what is it? Uh, what time are we ending this? And I've still got to get this pod up. 3.02 a.m. So 3.02. We do it for the people, Eddie. Hey, sometimes these are the, uh, this is the, uh, the non, uh, luxury side of the 6.30 kickoff. Are you, late, uh, hair in the, late are starts. you hair in the dog right now? Are you six, are you six pack in? No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not drinking anything. I think I'd throw up again if I did. Yeah, I'm not doing that either. I would have fallen asleep by now if I'd had anything to drink. Yeah, I'm going to get the rest of this postgame stuff up and uh, <laughs> probably hit the sack. I'm going to get this pod up, uh, so I'll have it up for you in the morning. But cool, cool. Eddie, I appreciate it. Uh, long yep, night, it was... uh, but it's fun. One no, day soon, we'll be doing this in the offices on campus. So For sure. There was a, there was a, I, I ran into a couple people today that were uh, asking me about the office and stuff, so... It is. Uh, it's exciting, and it was exciting. Our guys, seeing, Chef uh, Travis Caleb Williams. was DMing me, asking me if we were we were open for business yet. So, oh, really? Yeah. I told him. I think. I think after the bye week, it's not like a public building, really, or anything. It's just right. a production studio, so it's not like we're gonna be hosting tailgates there. Uh, and game day, it's harder. They, like they barely even let us in on game days anyway. But sure. Um, no, I mean there'll be time for that during the off season, probably, where you know we can make some appointments and have people come by. But yeah, we're taking baby steps right now. So like I said on Twitter, I've got, I just had 2000 feet of uh, ethernet cable delivered today. So I'm going to be stringing that all this week. So fun, fun. Um, Yeah. That's, that sounds exciting. It's going to be, it's going to look like a construction site for the next couple of weeks. I'm, (laughs) I'm just hoping that we could be open for business after the bye week. Cause that's, that's my goal right now. So sure. So anyway, but no, looking forward to all that stuff. Looking forward to the Isaiah Thomas show coming up again this week, uh, Unofficial 40. Should be good. Uh, all the content coming on the website. Appreciate everybody. Uh, subscribe to Sooterscoop.com. If you're not, if you appreciate us staying up till 3 a.m. 
uh, to bring you guys uh, post game podcasts every weekend. And uh, we didn't have to do it from a car this time, so that was good. And we can go now sleep in our own beds, which is good. Uh, and we'll see you guys back here uh, on Wednesday for the unofficial 40. And the next week, uh, Eddie and Bob will be in Lawrence for uh, the first bye week of the season. And uh, the second official bye week will be two weeks later. So thanks, everybody, for listening. Thanks to Eddie. Thanks to Eskridge Lexus in Oklahoma City. Uh, go check out our boys at deadsoxy.com. Also, appreciate all of our sponsors on the podcast. And we'll see you guys next week right back here for another edition of the Eskridge Lexus Post Game Podcast on Soonerscoop.com.